if you do get to the next level through willpower and sheer perseverance alone, it's not going to feel fun. Okay. Because you're going to always feel like you have the monkey on your back. You need other people. It's required. Okay, welcome back to another great episode that we have for you here on the Unstoppable Woman podcast. We are continuing our conversation on team, which is always a hot topic. And one of the things that we wanted to cover were a few things that come up frequently in questions that I get from clients. And I was sharing a few of those with Sarah previous to this discussion. So she wanted to ask me for more details on that. And let's flesh out the, the, the learning on it, the way forward, how to next level your life and, and really take your business to the next level. I think uh, we had an interesting, you shared one of your coaching calls with me recently and an interesting topic came up there that I would love to expand on. Uh, And the, the topic there was getting like the need, the addiction to getting the credit for doing the things and the double binds around that. Uh, can you can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, super, super interesting. So here's the thing. This came up in, in a coaching call with a client. And it is she's not unusual with this, but she's unusual in, in the sense that she is stepping forward into the awareness. Most people have this as a program that's running, but they're not even aware, one, of the program, and two, that it's holding them out back from next leveling their business. So this is someone who's, who's really going for more. She's on track this year to have a million dollar revenue generating business. Um, she's very close to that. She's already had several $84,000 months. Like, so she's on track here. So this is not someone who has a teeny tiny business is new to the game, any of that. Okay. But she is, she is in the process of massively up leveling everything in her business. And this is, this is one of them. And and she's an immersion client so that we're talking every day for a quick little check-in. And what she brought up recently was that, and by the way, she's given me permission. I'm not going to name her name or anything like that, but she's given me permission to use her stories anywhere that I want. So just as a note, I do keep my clients confidentiality very, um, uh, it's very important to me. However, she's given me license to do this and and we're not going to use her name anyways, but she was on vacation and she was actually taking care of her elderly mother for about a week, helping her get some things set up. All good. We had done some pre-planning on how to help set up that time in her business so that things would go smoothly. And uh, today's call was like, things are great. Everything's happening without me. It's amazing. I have the most amazing team like that. She was giddy with excitement that she, you know, had developed this amazing team. And, and this is on the heels of having to let go of some people and recognizing that there are certain, there was someone on her team who was not up to standards and having to go through the process of what it, recognizing that, letting that person go, all of that, which is challenging. It doesn't have to be challenging, but it can be challenging. And, you know, the thinking through the process of what that meant and all of that was, was an important growth uh, moment for her lesson in terms of scaling and, and all of that. And I love how the universe gives you exactly what you need when you need it. Okay. So she just came off of this. It went pretty well. She would, she would say, you know, there, there was room for some more gracefulness in this, but you know, as it goes first time through in this particular situation, I really up leveled, but there's a little bit of a wobble there. Okay. Like internal confidence wobble about it, but still acknowledging all the things that had gone well. So when I say the universe gives you exactly what you need when you need it, she then two days later has this experience of being out of town and realizing that all this stuff blew up while she was gone and her team handled it. Her paralegal and her lawyer, they just took care of it without her. And she didn't have to do anything. And all she had to do was say, thank you. 
rock on, right? Like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Love it. Rock on. And so that was one like, booyah. Like, it's like this little aff- affirmation from the universe saying, yeah, when you let go of something of a higher nature, something, so, excuse me, when you let go of something of a lower nature, something of a higher nature has the ability to come in, especially if you've set yourself up for that. So she set herself up by letting go of someone who wasn't up to standards, um, not a bad human being, not a horrible person. We're not denigrating someone from a value standpoint, but she wasn't doing the job that was required at the level that it was required. And, and she filled it with these people who are really stellar. And she affirmed that we had a little moment of affirmation there. The second thing that happened was that she missed a meeting. It was on her calendar, but she missed a meeting. And it was with her CFO and her bookkeeper. And it was a big financial meeting. It was something that was important to her. And she has been really in the the thick of things with with some financial stuff. So it was an important uh, place for her to show up. Completely spaced it, taking care of mom. She was like, I don't want to make excuses, but this is what I was doing. And I spaced it, right? I own that. But guess what happened? I get a text from my bookkeeper saying, are you going to be on the call? But I've, I've missed it by hours at this point. And then... I get an email from my CFO saying, we had a great meeting. So-and-so and and I took care of X, Y, and Z. We're moving the ball forward like this. It's happening like this. And we're good to go. Have a great rest of your trip. See you when you get back. That's awesome. Right. Okay. And it's like, she was like, oh my freaking God, it can happen like this, right? Like I don't have to be involved in every single detail, every single plan, every single decision. I can hire great people. I'm like, yeah, you can hire great people and then they can do things. And this is how you leverage. This is how your business runs while you're on vacation. And it seems so obvious. Like this is not rocket science. I get that for anyone listening. I get that. This is not rocket science. Okay. I don't know how to send a rocket to the moon. Okay. Like I couldn't figure that out. And most people can, but most people could figure out like, Oh, you need people to take care of things while you're gone. Like this is not a new concept, but when you're in it, when you think that you have to be responsible for everything in order for the business to move forward, this is a big freaking deal. Okay. So then there's more to this. Can I keep going or do you want to add anything? Keep going. Okay. So then there's, so, so we affirmed that that was great. And, and then she says, there's like this little niggle and she laughed about it because she's like, I love that expression. She got that from, from me. I don't know where I got that expression from, but I love it. Like it's, it's, I, I use it now too from you, <laughs> right? Isn't it? It's the perfect expression for that little thing underneath the surface. It's not quite, you know, it's, it's, it's niggling at you. It's just like, it's right there. Um, what does it mean? What does it mean? And she started to make herself feel bad. This was previous to our conversation about missing that, that meeting. Okay. And like everything was going well, but she still felt bad about not showing up. And I very directly said, you're addicted to blaming yourself. Stop that. We're not doing that anymore. Stop that. And it landed for her. She's like, oh shit, that's true. I I'm addicted to making myself wrong, which is what blame is. It's saying you're wrong because there's value judgment in blame. Okay. It's not, it's not blame does not come with this neutral assessment. We can analyze a a situation and say, Oh yeah, she missed the meeting. Yep. That is a mistake that, that is neutral. There's nothing, there's no value judgment to it, but blaming yourself is adding piling on the meeting, meaning of you're an F up, you're screwing up, you're not good enough, you look at all the things you do wrong, right? Blame, 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 blame. Like, even though the result was everything moved fine just without her having to be there. Correct. So the actual result was A, but her reaction was still B. And this is the power of the subconscious mind. And this is the kind of uh, thing that needs to be seen if you're actually going to 
make changes and you have to do it on this like microcosm, this little, these little micro decision, micro choices on how you're going to perceive something. And she didn't even realize that she was addicted to seeing herself and treating herself this way. But her self image was saying, no, 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 you can't sail that high. Come back down. This is where, this is the stratosphere fear the, the, the lane that we play in. You can't go way up here to this next stratosphere and really, you know, sail forward, you know, skyrocket forward. No, you have to stay here. And I'm going to help you stay here by hitting that little button in your brain that says you, what feels comfortable, what feels normal, what you're addicted to is blaming yourself for not getting it right. And we don't do that anymore. You stop that. You stop that right now. <laughs> so that's a, that's a, I wanted to share that story. Well, I shared it with, with Sarah and she wanted to sh have me share the story because I think it's a really powerful example of how we, we can really limit ourselves from moving forward, even though conscient consciously we know the right thing to do. And she could have evil, easily self-sabotaged herself at that point and spiraled down, limited her ability to show up. She was actually taking care of her mom, so it would have been in her personal life. But if she had been in work mode, it would have you know, downgraded her energy and her motivation and how she saw herself. And she wouldn't have taken the next step and the next step and the next step. And that's a way of, of really limiting yourself that's beyond just team though it's within the context of team because her team was actually helping her get to the next level. But her mindset was saying, no, come back down to here. And that's, that's the space that we work in where we can really make massive changes. Because if you see that kind of pattern, then you can, you can keep going up instead of coming back down. I'm so glad that you shared that story. Cause I found it really fascinating that, you know, this moment that should have been like, such an excellent validation of like, I've hired well, and like, you know, I don't have to be in every single meeting, like caused anxiety. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it's so interesting to me, what a difference a mind, a mindset shift can make. Absolutely. And she left our coaching call thrilled, right? Because, right. oh yeah, this is how it's working. And she can get to the next level. And, and that's the process really. And that's the process on this link on the micro micro decision, micro moments that uh, the, your excellent next level, million dollar, seven figure, multi seven figure, six figure, wherever you're at business is not because you make one major decision. It's a, a, a thousand and one micro decisions like this every single day. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, I want to I want to point to another question that was recently asked to you um, in, in our virtual coffee because I think that you answered it. It was such a good question, and I think that you answered it really well there. And I, I think it it brings a lot to this conversation as well around team. Uh, this person was asking you uh, questions around team, but specifically involving how you can allow others to contribute and allow others to. Um, be a part of your overall vision without losing sight of your own vision. Um, and I thought that was such a great question and I love how you answered it. So I'd love if you expand on it here as well. Absolutely. It is a great question. So I'm glad you brought that up. The, the big thing that you have to start with is your own vision. And if you're not clear on your own vision, then we have to do some unpacking on why it's not safe for you to own your vision, why you can't vision, why you can't imagine what you want, why you can't, why you can't have desires, why you don't trust that process. That's step number one. You have to absolutely own your vision. Now, does that mean that I have everything mapped out crystal clear for the next five, 10, 15 years? Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. Because as you grow your business, you, new things drop on, drop in and there needs to be space for evolution and um, small course corrections or even large course corrections. So you want to allow that 
to be part of your world. That said, I am very clear about my overarching vision, like what I am here to do, what our business is here to do, how I want to feel in my business, how I want my days to be structured. Now, are they all are all my days 100% the way I want them? Not yet. Okay, gonna just be raise my hand in full transparency. We're moving towards that. But I have a very clear vision. And every day, it drops in more and more, not just the vision, right? That that continues, the imagination continues, but the, the realization of all the visions that I put into play, you know, and have been imagining and, and considering for so long, like they come in and it's just, it's a beautiful thing. It's one of the things I teach with the creation playbook that's part of the mastermind that I do every year is I really, it, it's, it's this planning and visioning process. And what's magical about it is if you keep it up, you actually see how quickly everything comes into being. So I just reviewed some from previous months and I'm like, wow, all that's done, 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 done. Oh my God, it's all done. And unless you're reviewing it, you don't realize how this stuff does, is made manifest, but it starts with the idea. It starts with the vision. And So you as the business owner, the leader, the entrepreneur, the empire builder, you know, the leader of your own career, if you're not the person in the business, running the business, you know, what's your vision? Okay. That that's super, super clear. Now you then have to realize that if you have a my way or the highway or a DIY attitude about this, you will not be able to scale. You will not be able to to leverage. You will not be able to get to the next level quickly. And if you do get to the next level through willpower and sheer perseverance alone, it's not going to feel fun. Okay. Because you're going to always feel like you have the monkey on your back. You need other people. It's required. It's required for love. It's required for life. It's like, it's, it's, it's everything people, you know, good things come through good people, right? And Absolutely. so, you know, the first thing you have to look at is, do you have great people on your team? This is a conversation about teams. So like, are the people on your team trustworthy, smart, creative, problem solvers? You know, I'm, I'm not going to ask the IT person on my team for marketing advice. Okay. Like that's not the contribution that that person's going to give. But if I have a technical issue, like we want to do this, how would you do this? I am going to ask the expert on my team because I'm not an expert in that. So you have to hire great people and then you have to know what their uh, skill set is, what the, what their expertise is, and make sure that you're asking for contribution from the right people. And, and then ask for contribution because the power of the mastermind is that more than one mind together has exponential results. And, you know, I I talked about the mastermind that we do as a program, which is very powerful. And I also have a mastermind that is my company. Like the, the people on my team are part of my mastermind. And, and Napoleon Hill talks about how, um, Andrew Carnegie talked about the mastermind principle and all the people on his team who were problem solvers, like let's pull it all together. And Ford, uh, the Ford Motor Company talked about this as well. Like, I don't know how to do this, but I've got great people on my team. And when we put all of those minds together, we come up with exponential solutions and success. So yes, your mastermind can be a group of entrepreneurial women and that serves a purpose that is, is useful because oftentimes you need to be able to let your guard down and if you will, with other uh, colleagues and, and, and people at the same level as you. And you don't always have the luxury of being able to do that with your team. It's, it's inappropriate. Um, But you can have, you can have a mastermind within your, your team as well. And, and you want that. So it starts with having a clear vision Then you have to make sure that you've hired the right people. Then you have to make sure that you're asking the right people on your team for the the contribution that they have the expertise in. And 
then you have to trust yourself to be able to um, synthesize that and make a great decision. I think people come into issues and have challenges because if someone on their team brings them a great idea, but it doesn't sync up with something else, they don't know how to say no, or that's not right, or what about this? And they don't have the internal confidence. They're afraid of hurting someone else's feelings. That comes up a lot. And and that just, you need to move through that. It's going to hold you back if you're afraid to hurt other people's things feelings. Like I've had clients, this totally random squirrel thought here. Um, and, and I will say that I did this when I very, very, very early on in my, my business, I was afraid to let my, uh, assistant look at do payments, payment processing and stuff, because I didn't want her to see how much I was making. Cause I didn't want to hurt her feelings because she wasn't making that much. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely ludicrous mindset. Okay. Owning that, that was many, 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 many years ago, but it was so real to me. I cared more about how she felt than the success of my business. And she didn't feel anything. It was total projection. Okay. She's, she was thrilled to have a job at a kick-ass company, right? Okay. Like it wasn't, it, there was no expectation that she was going to be making the revenue that the CEO of the company was going to make. And I used to work at companies. I never had that expectation. I never said, oh, why am I not making as much money as the CEO? Like, it was, right? It was totally ludicrous. And I've, I've heard other clients mention similar things. So you just have to snap out of that. But that was a little bit of a squirrel tangent. Um, you want to bring me back to center? Do you have more questions on that? Yeah, actually, let me see if I can just... Uh reformulate there a little bit. So what you're saying is one, a large part of that is hiring the right people, um, people that can understand and get excited about executing your vision and people who are not, who are going to take feedback well. And the other part of that is getting your own mindset, right? Being confident in your vision and knowing exactly what you want. Is that correct? Yes. I would add one thing. I'm not asking for yes men or yes, women in, in our sense, in our scenario here. Okay. Like I, I when I ask for contribution, I'm asking specifically, like, how are we going to pr- solve this problem? I don't have all the answers or this is my plan. Can you throw darts in it? Can you tell me if this works? Right? Like, am I missing something? And we'll go back and forth a lot. And sometimes you'll bring, for instance, you, you'll bring something to the table and then I'm like, that's a good idea. But then we'll like keep playing it out and that doesn't work for this reason. And then we'll get to a better place, but it's in dialogue. It's in conversation. And I'm not making you wrong for not having the, the, the full plan perfectly laid out. I, I do want you to have it a certain degree, you know, pulled together, right. but then right. it's a conversation to improve upon it. That's also the way that you learn my vision and what the company's about, right? Like that people aren't like, in, it's not just out of water, instant, like understanding you've learned it. So why don't you talk about that a little bit, how you've learned, I think this would be helpful for people, how you've learned my, my vision and how that might be, had been different than what your vision was, or I, I don't know what the question is there, but why don't you speak to that? Sure. So I think with you, it's easier than with a lot of places because we always have very um, open and direct communication. Um, When you're in that mindset of like, oh, I can't let this person who processes the payments process the payments because I don't want them to see like that doesn't work. Like, um, and that definitely doesn't work as you start to hire higher level people doing other things. Um, You know, we can have a direct dialogue. I can say, hey, I have this idea for X, Y, and Z. Like, what do you think about that? And it may not be a full plan at that point. I just want to get your thoughts. And if your thought is like, I'm not into that. Okay. Like I'll bring you a different idea another time. Like I also like, I don't take that personally. Like at the end of the day, like this is actually something we talked about all the way back when I interviewed at the end of the day, our brand is you. So if it doesn't resonate with you, then it's not the right solution. So in my mind, like, Oh, I'm just not feeling that. Okay, well, let's move on to the next thing that maybe is going to be the right thing. And we'll talk through that. And that gives me a better idea of the voice and the brand and you and everything, just a very open dialogue. Yeah. So two things on that. One, one of our core values is a word that I made up, which is undefended. And 
I think it's a made up word, but basically it's that you, you, you're not defensive, you're undefended. And we hire for that. I don't, I don't want people on my team who have that momentary little, um, resistance to taking feedback or input there. And you can feel it energetically where people get all, um, kind of pissy about it or or irritated. Yeah. Like not available for that. And because it's kids, because I'm not giving it out as a blame or judgment or, or denigration of the other person. It's just like, no, that's not going to work for this reason. Or what about this? Or, you know, it's a conversation. And then the second piece. So, so we hire for that. So this is on team. We hire for that. That's super important. Now, you have to be that as well. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to hire for that. Like it's, we live in a vibrational universe, law of vibration. You have to get yourself to the level where you're not, you're not activating and energizing that kind of um, absolutely defended blame kind of attitude. Um, yeah, it's super refreshing from my side too to be able to be like, hey, Amira, you just recorded this, and um, I've, I've, I've got some holes to poke in it. Can we maybe re-record? And you know, I know that you're never going to be like, oh how dare you? You know, <laughs> no, I might be like, Oh, really? Again? Yes. But, but, me. But, at the same but, time, you're not going to be offended that no. I'm like, Hey, maybe, maybe let's re-record this one, you know, like things like that. And like, I think that that's so important in efficiencies and in growth, because if we had to have, if I were afraid to tell you like, Hey, I, I know you can do better than this recording. Like what well, you just had like bad energy here. Like, I don't know what happened. Like, and we've had those conversations totally. it's never a difficult conversation and it's never a conversation I hesitate to have with you. And I think that's so important. Yeah. I'm, I am extraordinarily grateful, which was my second place was like, I want people who bring stuff to me. Like it doesn't work if, if you just, you know, rubber stamp everything. Like I want you to tell me, Hey baby doll, that sucked. And I'll be like, really? <laughs> Ouch. You know, but sometimes I'm like, I think that sucked. Did that suck? And you'll be like, no, that was great. And I'm like, okay, I didn't have enough distance from that. And I, that that works as well. So I think there's a lot of, so so back to the question that was posed by the woman on the, the coffee Q&A um, and connection call that we do. It was It was a question of like, how do you, allow for that creative feedback and you have to encourage it. You actually have to like, if I was someone who got defended when Sarah suggested I do things in a different way, then she would stop being someone in my company, at least who brought me ideas. And that then kills the, then you're back to a do it yourself mentality. And that's that, it's a killer of growth. It's a killer of efficiencies. Like it's a killer of productivity. It makes it so you're not getting the best um, of anything. Like, and I, I can say that from experience. I've been in the company. I'm a very direct person. So if I'm having, and it's very refreshing to be able to be super direct with you. Like, uh, if I'm having a tactful conversation with someone, I'm like, hey, I think that we need to change how we do this. And the automatic reaction is, no, just do it how I said. Like, okay, well, that's how we'll do it from now on. Next time this happens, it's much more difficult for me to want to bring this feedback to you if you're just immediately like, no, I want to do it this way. And then, and especially then if we do it and then things don't maybe go as well and that person still can't admit that it didn't go well. I've been in that situation before too, which is definitely not you, which is so refreshing because like it just makes us all better. Yeah. And it makes it a fun place to work. Right. And, and it makes it a fun place for me to work. Like love you, want it to be fun for you too, but right since I'm the center of my own universe, right? Like I want it to be a fun place. It's not fun if I'm having to defend myself all the time. It's not fun if I have to be in conflict all the time. It's not fun if I don't have my inner core sense of self, self self-ownership so dialed in that I am triggered by what other people are doing. Now, I want to just say for anyone who's listening and goes thinking, oh my God, that's me. I do that. Okay. Like just breathe and realize that this is something that can be learned. I did not, Sarah might've started off this way, but I did not start, start off this way. I started off in a very, um, I have to defend myself. I have to prove myself. I, I I'm right. You're wrong. 
I, I was very sucked into that and committed DIYer and it was painful. Uh, and it, and it wasn't, it wasn't getting me ahead. And because of the principles that I study and teach, I, I realized that I wanted different results and I back engineered. Well, if this is the result I want, i.e. a fun place to work I, with a great team, I have the best fucking team. Okay. Let me just say, ha ha ha, everyone. I have the best fucking team, right? But like, I created that based on a vision of how I wanted my results to be and recognizing the gap that I wasn't getting those results. I was, I didn't have a great team and what I, what did I need to do differently to create that? And then it was step by step by step by step by step and lots of uh, mistakes along the way sure. and, and recognitions and, and then, uh, really, but, but staying persistent, I think perseverance is a really huge thing. So know the results that you want and then see, you know, we live in a cause and effect universe. What are the causes that you're putting into effect that are getting that result? Change the causes. Well, I want to throw one more thing out on that, that direct communication, like, when that's not something that's as possible, it's exhausting for your team because they have to tiptoe around you and, you know, find the ways to be like, oh, I don't think we should like, and you have to, we've all had that where you're writing the email and you delete it. And then you write another next sentence and you go, oh no, and you delete it. Uh, we don't have time for that. So it makes it just so much where I can be like, I don't like that picture. I don't like this. Like, I don't like that. And you know, of course I don't sound like that all the time, but um, <laughs> when it's necessary, I can do that and it's never an issue. And then that allows me to just move on to the next thing without that mental exhaustion of trying to figure out how to tiptoe around an issue. Um, so that's lovely. mentally exhausting. And it use, yeah. uses up from a, from a business perspective, think about this and, and it's what you're saying, but from, from a business owner perspective, I want Sarah to be using her mental emotional bandwidth on slaying things in this business. I don't want her using up her emotional mental bandwidth on petty, ridiculous interpersonal stuff that is, is unnecessary. Now, if there was really a, if we got to a place where there was a conflict or something, then, you know, I would want you to bring it to my attention and, and we would, we would solve for that. Yep. Um, and in fact, that's happened. You know, I've had people on my team say, I love this. I love this. I love this. If we keep doing this, I'm going to, you know, I, this is not a threat, but I need to let you know, I, I can't sustain this. And I'm like, oh, very well aware. Okay. Thank you for being clear. And then I'm pretty immediate in, in shifting things. Um, not everything can be shifted. Not everything's like, I'm going to change the world to, 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 to fit that. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> but when it actually, so this is back to the original theme of the conversation, uh, of this part of the conversation, if, if the request that's being put out or, or even the complaint or, or even the statement that's being put out is in alignment with my vision, not different than my vision, then I'm like, thank you for bringing that up. That's, that's going to help me get to the next level. It's causing me to make sure that I shift and grow in order to create that. And it's ne never has someone done that in a way where I'm like, oh, that doesn't align with what I want. That actually is what I want. And yeah, let's make this happen. Let's not, let's not do crazy over here. Let's, let's do sanity. Right. And, and, and made adjustments. So um, I think that's really an important piece to this also, like of the, when I'm clear about my vision, then what, what my team brings to me, what the contributors bring to me, um, I'm validating that and, and filtering it in respect to my vision. And it makes it really easy to then say yes to a request. Yeah. Yeah. That, that makes absolute sense. Um, and it makes, again, like I said, it just makes us all much more efficient, uh, on a, on a similar track. Um, can we talk a little bit about playing the, playing the blame game? So you have this 
lovely team in place. Maybe they're not lovely, but you have this team in place. I have a lovely team. I'm we have a big ass team. Yeah. team. But you have a team in place and um, that does, you know, go with it, giving up a little bit of control. But sometimes when people do that and things aren't going the way that they want, they start pointing fingers. Can you talk about that? Yeah. Ask me how I know. Okay. <laughs> so this is one of the things that I really had to clean up internally um, in the process. And, and occasionally I, I, I will catch myself out and I'll be like, okay, what's the personal responsibility piece here? Right? So the, the thing to, to recognize is if you are irritated about something that's happening in your business, some result that is not what you want, and it's driving you crazy, whatever terminology, you're irritated, resentful, you're, it's driving you crazy, you're frustrated, whatever it is. That's a perfect time to stop and realize, are you actually blaming someone for, for this result? And okay, probably look at that. She's not doing this. It's not happening fast enough, right? There's some little whiny voice in your head. Maybe it's not as infantile as I just made it sound. Maybe it's an adult self-righteous voice, but there's a little bit of a blame piece going on there. And you need to take personal responsibility here. One of the best things that I ever heard, I wish I could give credit to who I heard this from, but I, I don't know. Um, but if it was you and you're listening, I love this adage. Blame the system, not the person. And I'm like, when I first heard that, I was like, what, what does that mean? Huh? Huh? But then I started, it stuck with me and I started thinking about it. So is this a systems issue, right? And, and within systems, I, pu I put communication. Is this a communications issue, right? So if it is, then we have to solve for that. If I'm being asked something of a contractor, an employee, a team member, and it's irritating me, then I have to think, well, do we not have the right system in place? Do I, right? Like, do I need to put some other protocol in place so that this, so I'm ahead of the game instead of behind it? That's just a simple example. But if you're not getting the results, like what is the system issue and what's the communication issue? I call out communication because it's really important. And you've been on the other side of that. There are times where I'm like, hey guys, we're, we're dropping the ball here, right? And let me be like, we've had a couple conversations about this. They've been nice. And let me be abundantly clear and very specific about what the bottom line of this is. Because if we don't get this done, then guess what? We don't have a fucking business. So like, it's great that we have these other initiatives, but we need to focus here, right? That's my personal responsibility to articulate that to everyone, make sure that they know what the ramifications are without blaming. Okay. And, and to be like, okay, are they going to step up? Are they not? Are they right? Because we have a results driven company. So like, it's like, it's great that we're doing all this, but this is the main initiative, right? That's a, that's a actually recent example, but there's other small little examples where like, have I, have I shared clearly how to do this? Have I been clear about timelines? Have I been clear about um, parameters? Am I, am I being wishy-washy or saying too many different things and going in too many different directions? Do I have too many initiatives and my team just can't keep up? That's on me, okay? Or I need to hire more people, right? That's on me. And right, so like there's a personal responsibility place here that's incredibly important. And if you're blaming other people, it's such a great litmus test, like a little trigger, like, oh, blame. Ah, I need to take personal responsibility. I need to look at whether this is a systems issue. Um, within that, is it a communications issue? And um, because I don't want to be a victim. Okay. When I blame someone else, I'm giving away all my power. I become a victim of their behavior. That's it's an untruth. It's not how I live my life. I refuse. Like I'm not going there. 
So take taking the personal responsibility means that you're a creator of your life, not a victim of other people's um, outside circumstance, other people, any of that. Yeah. And I want to say from, you know, from a management perspective as well, like this is something you do well is you give your team the ability to take personal responsibility as well, honestly and directly. Like, for example, we had something like last week where you said like, Hey, we didn't, I don't see any invites for virtual coffee. And I went, what? Why don't we have any, why did, why, hi, why didn't that happen? And I went and looked and it turns out it was my fault. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and that's the first thing I said, like, whoops, that wasn't the executor's fault. That was my fault because it was a communication error, like didn't get it to where it needed to be for her to know that she needed to put it out there. Um, but again, that goes back to how you have led the team and it, it starts with you. It trickles down. Like everybody can have their own personal responsibility and that helps us efficiently grow. Yeah, absolutely. And just to clarify for the people listening, Sarah has a lot of cred in the bank. She's not doing that every single day going, oops, my bad. Okay, that doesn't work, right? Okay, but when someone is fundamentally excelling at a certain level and then they make a mistake, there's no need to crucify that person, okay? And even if it's a consistent mistake, there's no need to crucify that person. You either have to coach them up or you need to give them significant direct communication on what needs to change or you need to fire them, right? Which is what you just did with someone, okay? Yeah. So, okay. Anything else on that that you want to cover? Um, I don't think so. I think the last thing I want to hit is actually where we started because it seems as we've been talking, this has kind of been the theme. So I kind of want to end it here too. Um, the DIY mentality. Um, that has been the theme. Like we talked about that in when it's time to hire and uh, letting go and letting your team contribute. And with the, well, with all of it, everything that we have talked about today has that DIY mindset as the underlying, like, Hey, you got to get out of this. So can we end there on any last advice that you might have for someone who might be looking, think, might be listening and going, Oh crap. I think that, I think that I'm in this mindset. How do I get out of that? Higher. <laughs> Like just it was, seriously, it's it's not that complicated. You have to you have to bite the bullet and you have to do it. I'll I'll elaborate. You have to hire team members. This means you have to hire personal team members, like your assistant, your therapist, your mentor. Your your mentor could be in your business as well. Your uh, housekeeper, your babysitter, whatever it is. Okay, hire. Just do it. Like one of the first things, you know, it was it was I had hired team members in my business first before I hired a housekeeper. And I had so much guilt over hiring a housekeeper. Like I can do it myself. Here's the DIY mentality. I can do it myself. Um, I could, you know, spend that money on something else. Like really that's what it was. And it was coming from a scarcity mindset. Like I don't have enough. And that, and, and that scarcity mindset was, I don't have enough and I don't know how to make more to have enough. Okay. And what I teach people is to not just be flippant and say, Oh, I have plenty and not know how to actually make plenty. You actually have to learn how to, to increase your income, whether you are in business or in, in it's your a career or it's your own business. Okay. Um, so hire, that was a scary thing and I had to do it anyway. And it was scary because I was, not only was it around the scarcity mindset around money, but it was also around what are people going to think about me, particularly my neighbors, when the housekeeper shows up, they're going to think I'm all that and more and I'm too good for them. And like this and that and the other, which is silly. Well, it's silly to let that hold you back. It's not, it's not silly that they will do that or won't do that. I had a neighbor who said, Oh, you hired housekeepers. Right. And, and, it wasn't a dig, but it was a acknowledgement of your different and your, your, you know, like, how are you doing that? And how is that working? And here's the thing, Sarah, when you change, it forces someone else to change. And they don't like that because it's, it's, it's a reflection. Okay. So I was changing. I was up leveling my life. Now I did it anyways, but I had to, I had to make the decision and move through it. That's the only way that you can 
do it. Now, where people get stopped a lot is their first hires aren't great because they don't know how to hire and they have all sorts of wonky internal things that say they're not worth it. So they make terrible, terrible hires. Ask me how I know. Okay. Like really like the first housekeepers, I mean, just continuing with this, we're not great. And I was like, why am I paying for this? They can't do a good job. Blame, 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 blame. <laughs> right. And, and I was like, okay, well, I didn't really, you know, evaluate. I didn't question them. I didn't communicate what I wanted. I felt bad about asking for what I wanted. Like all these things, when I really looked into it seems so basic and, and, um, obvious, but it wasn't for me at the time. I had to actually learn how to make requests and not feel bad about it. Yeah. Um, and, and so you, you, you get to the next level. And so it's important to hire and to hire quickly. And the other thing that comes up always is I don't have the money for that. You don't need the money for it until you hire someone. Then you have a need and we always get what we need when we need it. Okay. Because urgency will drive you to do different things. Okay. And, and so if you hire, no, I like to hire now. Now I like to hire when I have money in the bank and I can project and it all makes sense with the budget and all of that. But when I was first starting, I was putting those hires on my credit card. I'll be very transparent and honest. Like that was going on the Amex and you know, some, some months I was floating that and it was, um, it was great. It allowed me to scale my business. Okay. A lot of people can't sustain that. They can't emotionally sustain that, but I couldn't have gotten to where I am now without having invested. Well, one in my mentor. Okay. That hugely helped me. And that was a huge investment, but in, you know, all the systems that I bought and, but we're talking about team here. So let's talk about team. Um, and, and the people that I hired and in, it was just so important to pull the trigger before I was ready, but then I had to do the work to make sure that I was able to sustain it and, and get to the next level. So there you go. Definitely. Well, I, I don't think I have any other questions. You want to wrap us up? Sure. Let's see. We covered a lot today in today's episode. I think the main theme here is you need people and you need good people. And in order to have great people on your team who are co contributing to, to really allow you to scale and to have an amazing life yourself, and you, you have to be the person who has that. And in order to be the person that has that, you need to be vibrating, which means being at that level. And so it's required that you keep raising your standard on beingness so that you receive more as a match in terms of better and better team members. And it's always been the case that um, as I up level, my team up levels as well. And uh, don't be afraid to really step into that next level, hold yourself to a higher standard and hold your team to a higher standard and do it in a way. Now I say that, but do it in a way that's, fun and delightful. Like there's no, there's no need to make this, um, uh, a, a place of resistance or make wrong or bad place to work. Like we have a damn good time and we're scaling a business and we're having fun. That's part of my vision, by the way, is, is not to have, a, an icky place to live and work. Right. So, if, if you're experiencing that, really step step up your own beingness. And, and if you want help with that, you know where to find us. And I will also do a little underhanded pitch that you should come to the Unstoppable Woman Income Breakthrough Summit. This coming one in November is around deconstructing freedom. And we're talking about these very things about how you actually go about increasing your self-worth and changing your identity and self-image so that you can be a match for exactly what you want in this world. So that's a really, that's a great place to start. And the link to that is the unstoppablewoman.com slash summit. And you can find out more then. Okay. And that is a wrap. 
Thank you so much for joining us and for being a part of the Unstoppable Woman movement. I want to let you know that we've got a ton of free resources for you for scaling your business at theunstoppablewoman.com slash free stuff. Please go ahead and check those out. And we'd also love your help in getting the message out. Share this podcast with all the unstoppable women in your life, your friends, your colleagues, your business besties. Please do that. And if you're game, we'd super duper duper appreciate a review on iTunes as well. Thanks so much and be unstoppable.